Hey guys, Jaden Irwin here with Little Sticks. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. This is part three of the Dino crash course. So if you haven't caught up quite yet, you might wanna go back on the last two parts and catch up. Um, from here, we're gonna be talking about modules with Dino. So if you aren't really sure what I'm talking about with modules, it's basically NPM, right? So like if you've used Node, if you've used NPM, um, that's a way of pulling modules or little chunks of code from the internet and using those within your code. Um, Dino has modules as well, but it takes a little bit more of a browser approach with its modules. And we'll get into that more too here in a second. Um, but really we're gonna be looking through modules. So we're gonna go through the standard library from Dino and what that is. Uh, we're also gonna use a third party module and we are gonna use an NPM module as well which Dino now has as of 1.28, I believe. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. We're gonna go to our code here, really picking up from where we left off. And the first thing is I am going to create a new data.js file, and we're just gonna pull from an API real quick and create a file. That way we can kind of have like a little micro server running with this. Um, and that's really the modules that we're gonna be using are helping us will be helping us create a little micro server. So let's do const data equals await fetch. And we are going to pull from this Star Wars API. So swappy.dev, I don't know if you've used it before, but it's a good little API helper. So we're gonna do console.log data. And you know what we're actually gonna do is const results equals await data.json results. If I can spell that correctly. Now we're gonna do Dino run, allow net, because we're doing a network request for this fetch, data.js. And there you go, we're console logging the data from that fetch. Now what we wanna do with that data is create a file so we're going to do, and you've ran into this before, um, encoder equals new text encoder. And then we're going to do con, uh, await dino dot write file. And this is going to be called data.json. The file in it, encoder dot encode. And then we're going to have this little json dot stringify results. So it is stringifying the results coming back from the API and creating a data.js file or data.json file. So it's going to ask, uh, do you want write permissions? We're going to say yes. There we go, data.json. If we open this up, we'll format it real quick. There we go, we've got the JSON. So now if we go ahead and create a new file called server, Js. This is where we're going to create this little micro server that serves this data.json file. Um, what we're going to do is go back over to Dino here, and it's dino.land for this site, and then standard library. So the standard library is under the modules. Um, standard library is a actual module of li it's a library of modules from Dino directly. So if you have any issues with it then you get to talk to the Dino team. Um, and it is pretty cool actually, because JavaScript hasn't ever really had like this standard library and other languages do have a standard library. And really it should just be a library of modules or packages that you really wanna use pretty often, or they have like lower level features that you often need. For example, HTTP, right? So we have this little serve command that we can pull from this HTTP module from Dino and it just works, right? It's, I don't have to go and use some third party module and if they, that person that's maintaining it no longer wants to maintain it, um, you're kind of like in a bad place. So with Dino, they are doing a standard library, which I really appreciate. Um, you can check this out if you go to dino.lan, go to the standard library, and then click on view documentation. It will actually let you see the individual modules and docs for each of those. So poke around in there, kind of see what they're offering. Uh, we are gonna use the HTTP module though. And then we are gonna use the server right here. 
So we are gonna copy this, import server from, and then there's a URL, right? So that's a little bit different than NPM. NPM, you're doing an import from, and then it's pulling it from your node modules folder. That's where Dino takes more of a browser approach where it's just letting you import from a URL, which that's how browsers have worked for a while with modules. So it's kind of cool to see that Dino is taking the same approach that the browser does, where I can just import modules from any URL. Um, and that's where the security comes in too, that Dino is letting you have the security in mind with your modules. So we're gonna import server from dino.land forward slash standard, HTTP and module. So we are gonna go ahead and do a const decoder equals new text decoder. This is gonna be UTF-8 text decoder. And then we're going to do const data equals await dino.read file. And then it's reading data.json and it does need to kind of know um, our decode. Actually, let's just do that. So const data equals await dino.read file. Now, you know what we're actually gonna do is encoding UTF-8. That should work. Let's try it. <laughs> I didn't save that for my notes, but that should actually work. So let's do, um, serve and actually let's do serve here so we're going to import serve from http server so let's do serve and this is going to have a request right so underscore rec and then that has a function So we're gonna return a response and we're going to return data. So headers, content type, um, that should be okay. We're gonna do Dino run. And really all that's happening here is that's serving a response, right? So request, so when it takes in a request, it's going to now return a response with the data that we just used. And that's the data.json file. So Dino run allow net, allow read, and we're gonna do server.js. Now it's gonna tell us listening on port, HTTP localhost 8000. So let's go over to that. And if we refresh, there you go. So it is a little micro server that's serving our JSON when we run a get request on localhost 8000. So that's awesome. There's a little micro server with 11 lines of code, <laughs> which is pretty sweet. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually use a third party module for a server. And to do that, we're going to go over into dino.land and we're gonna click on the search up here. We're gonna search for Oak. Oak is a third party module from, I don't even know the developer on there but it's really, really popular and it's based on, kind of inspired by Koa. That's kind of the mixing of the letters that's going on there. Koa has been around for a long time and it is a server option on the NPM side of things. So Oak is Dino's version of Koa. And you might be wondering, okay, so this is at dino.land forward slash X forward slash Oak. So is this like NPM? And the answer is yes and no. So this is a third-party module being served by Dino under this X um, hosting service that Dino has. So you can learn about Dino's third-party modules here. So this is kind of the closest thing that Dino has to NPM, but they don't really like say this is the only way that you should publish your modules for Dino. Technically, again, right, we're back to Dino uses modules the way the browser does. So it doesn't have to come from this X library. This is just one really popular way that you could host your modules with Dino. Let's go back and we're gonna search for Oak. We're gonna pull it up here and Oak is pretty straightforward, just like the serve command that we used. So import application from dino.land forward slash X forward slash Oak. So we're gonna comment that out. We're still gonna keep our const data equals await 
and then we're going to have this import application at the top. So let's add a little oak server comment. We're going to comment out serve because oak does things a little bit differently. Const app equals new application. So we're using the application module. And then we're going to do app.use context. So CTX stands for context. And um, this is pretty close to what we want actually. So app.use context, context.response. So it's responding. And then the body of that response is the data that we have here. So we also need to do await app.listen. And let's do port 8000, just like what we had on the standard library. So we're going to run the same command on the same server. And theoretically, if that worked, if we refresh, we should see the same data. And if you're not sure, OK, is that actually working or is that the last server still working? Uh, we can check that. So our const response, let's just do a hello world, kill our server, rerun it. There you go. Hello world right there. So we have our hello world response coming back. And if we switch back to our data, go back, refresh. There you go. We've got our data. So that's the Oak server, very basic version of the Oak server module working. Awesome. Now the last one is going to be an express server. And you might first be thinking, well, that's a that's an NPM module. I've used Express before. Well, Dino does support NPM modules. So if you go under modules again, click on NPM, you can learn more about how that works and what they're doing kind of under the hood to make NPM modules work. And it's actually really cool that this just works. This is now like, like legacy support almost for Dino. Um, what we're going to do is comment this out. And all we have to do is let's do express server import. This might look kind of weird at first. Express from npm colon express. So that what this is doing is it's telling Dino, hey, go to npm, get the express package. And that's what our import is. So let's go down to the bottom here and we can just use it. So const app equals express. You probably have seen that before. And then we're going to do app dot listen. And we're still on port 8000 console dot log server is running on port 8000. That's great. And then with express, you do app dot and copilot's got it app dot get request and response and res.send data. So instead of the sending data, let's do hello world first, just to make sure. Oh, and let's end that function. So this is where node modules and NPM modules might be requesting some other things under the hood. And that's where Dino is going to say, hey, do you want access to node deprecation, trace deprecation? We're going to say, we're going to say yes to all of these, but you can kind of see like NPM modules are requesting other access whenever you use them. So server is running on port 8000. If we go back over to port 8000, there we go. Hello world. You could even say hello express. It's going to request it every time because it's asking for those things. Hello express. Awesome. And if you can't see it, we'll just do that. <laughs> so hello express. Now let's go back here. Res.send data. There we go. Run it again. And if you get really tired of these, you can actually say dino.run. But keep in mind, this is a use at your own risk thing. Dino.run forward uh, dash capital A, meaning all permissions, this can run whatever it needs to run to work. Um, what you are doing is you're, you are explicitly saying anything is allowed at that point. So keep that in mind. But server is running on port 8000. Notice that it didn't ask for those permissions again. And there we go. That should be all of our JSON 
it actually looks like it's not encoded. Content type application JSON. Let's format that, we'll rerun it. Let's see if we can get this. Yeah, that is not quite what we want. <laughs> Um, let's not do the headers. So this is us just getting into more of the decoding and how all of that works too. What we probably could do here, import npm express. Let's do our encoder or decoder. Decoder equals new text decoder. I'm going to go back to how I had it in my notes to do it. Um, so Dino dot read file and let's do decoder dot decode data. And there you go. That is our JSON right there. So yeah, three different servers using three different modules. Um, that's really what I, what I wanted to cover in this video. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. I know that's kind of a lot if you're not quite used to how modules outside of NPM work, but that's really it, what, what we have here. The next piece is gonna be creating a little bit more of a, a full featured server with Dino. Um, I'm not quite sure what I wanna use. If I wanna use Oak or Express or whatever we end up with, um, you now have the tools to kind of move into that next piece there. So. Again, let me know if you have any questions, leave a like, go ahead and subscribe if you're liking this series, and I hope you guys have a good one. Peace.